Just go into the next one, which is farm information. And there's very little in here, just a case of getting names and phone numbers. The one thing you do have to just check in here is see down here at the bottom is the end of accounts here. So I'm doing this video in um, 2009, so I'm logically um, going to be doing the accounts for the 2009 year. Now, a lot of farmers, are their accounts here goes from January to December. If you're... If your year goes from, say, April to the end of March, you might still decide to actually do the farm accounts from the 1st of January anyway, because even though you might need to do accounts for your accountant from the 1st of April, you might like to do accounts from the 1st of January for Chagas Profit Monitor, for example. So just set your date in there, and that's all we need to do in here. Now, the next thing we'll do is, again, usually when we're training somebody on accounts, the, these are exactly the steps we always follow. And for a good few years, we've always said to clients, look, ring us before you start. And even if you're looking at this video and you're making progress by listening to this video, it's no harm to give us a call before you start so we can run through the logic and make sure that you're comfortable with it. Because, again, the most important thing with accounts is just start them off right. If you can do the first month well, you're absolutely flying through the second month. So if I come into Enterprises now... And you see the way we have some enterprises in here at the moment. And what I'm going to do is it makes sense just to tell the computer what enterprises you have. So let's assume that we actually have dairy and beef. So let's get, just highlight the sheep and we'll remove that. So the sheep is gone. So we're basically saying we have no sheep on the farm. Tillage, we'll highlight that, highlight that and go remove there as well. So tillage is now, gone, is now gone. So we're basically saying that we just have two enterprises. We have dairy and beef. And I'll show you the logic of that now in a second. The last thing we have to do in setup is actually go through the incomes and expenses and assets and just get them the way you want to have them. It doesn't make sense to have incomes for tillage when you don't have tillage on the farm. So before you start doing any transactions, we would recommend you go in here. So I go into incomes now. And here's all the incomes that we have in at the moment. Now the version of the software you have might have slightly different ones, but this is what we have in this version. You see straight away, we've already said we don't have sheep enterprise, so let's get rid of sheep in here. No need to have it, it's just cluttering up your screen, so it's gone. And we'll remove the tillage as well, and we'll remove the, just remove whatever we don't want. It just cleans up the accounts and customizes it for your particular farm. So um, the other thing we'll do is, we've already said that we have dairy and beef. So is bull sales, is that going to be dairy or is it going to be beef. Now you could have pedigree sucklers and commercial dairy cows so the, the bulls could be going from the beef enterprise, could be going from dairy. So the way to deal with this is it makes sense to tell your software at this stage to what are the default enterprise incomes and expenses. So I'll just show you with one example. So if I highlight bull sales and go change, you see down here in this area you have new item and I just pick this and I go beef. So I'm basically saying that bull sales is 100% beef income. So effectively what I'm saying is that I have some pedigree suckler cows and I sell the progeny of those pedigree suckler cows as beef, as bulls um, at the end of the year or whatever. So we save that. Now that means that every time you sell a bull, the program will automatically say this is 100% income to the beef enterprise. Now you don't have to do any of this enterprise splits if you don't want to do an enterprise analysis at the end of the year. Now, for example, if you're a pure dairy farmer and you don't have beef, tillage, sheep, you don't have anything else whatsoever, then all of this enterprise stuff is irrelevant. You only need to get involved in this if you have two clear enterprises and you want to make an effort at the end of the year to see, well, which enterprise is better than the other. What's, what, what's the profitability of one enterprise versus the other? So, for example, if I go down to calf sales, we just do this one and I go change. So we, uh, we would recommend if you're interested in enterprises, then do this for every income. So I come in here, and I say that this calf sales is, uh, let's do an example where we will say, look, most of the calves come from the dairy, but I might have sucklers as well, and in that case, beef is 40. So I'm basically saying that roughly, you know, you can put it in that it's 60-40. Now, if you sell, you know, during the year, if you sell six calves and they're all dairy, then you'll say that that particular one was 100% dairy. You don't have to go with a default split. Default splits like that probably make more sense on expenses rather than on incomes. So that's the income. So it's just a case of spending a little bit of time here making sure you're happy that the incomes are suitable for you and that if you have two enterprises, you want to make sure that the computer knows what is the default percentage for the different incomes. 
So I come in here now and I've gone into my list of expenses. Now again, the list of expenses you should ha you have should be fairly good. It would be very rare for you to have to add a new expense item, but you can obviously do that if you want. And if I scroll down here, I look for something that's relating to, say, tillage. So again, because we don't have tillage in this sample farm, we're going to get rid of straw. It's no harm to get rid of it. There's no point leaving it there. It's just cluttering up the drop-down menus. So you can see again what I'm doing is I go up and down through my list of expenses. Uh, if there's any expense in here that you actually don't know what it's for, then technically this shouldn't be there. You know, if there's any reason why there's an expense there that for some reason somebody put it in and it's no longer needed, then, then get rid of it. Uh, the other thing we would do here as well is, it, again, if you're interested in enterprise and only if you have two enterprises that you want to split apart, it, it makes sense to go through every expense and put in a default um, enterprise. So I go onto AI breeding and I go into and I drop and I say that um, basically what I'm saying here that AI is 100% dairy expense. So effectively if I have suckler cows they're all bred with a stock bull so all the AI goes into the dairy cows. Some of the expenses will be overheads and I'll just do one, uh, let's say the, the car. Um, if I go change here and I'll just show you if you have multiple enterprises how to deal with that. So I'll say um, beef and say 20 and I'll go new item again and I'll go dairy and I'll go 30. And what you're doing there is you're saying look half of my car cost goes against the farm the other half is private so I don't have to I don't have to allocate 100% so if I come down here I just go save it's telling me that I'm not using 100% but that's fine and uh, every time I put in an expense against the car 20% will go dairy 30% beef or whatever way I put it in. You can see the gist of what's happening there. So at the end of the year, if you're doing a cost per gallon, there'll be so many cents allocated from the running of the car based on that default split. That's the um, list of expenses. Again, to spend a little bit of time doing that. If I go into the ca capital asset items, um, these would be uh, obviously things like buildings, cattle, land, milk quota, power and machinery. Again, if, if you look at your list of capital asset items and if there's a lot of duplication or extra bits there, you might decide to actually clean it up and make it look exactly like that. So uh, when you do come to, you know, if you want to uh, use the balance sheet side of the software and keep track of assets and depreciation and so forth, you can do that as well. So again, you might as well have a list of assets here that relate to your farm. For example, if you're pure tillage and sheep, you might want to get rid of cattle and put in sheep, for example, as a, a as a stock rather than cattle. So that's the that's the whole setup. And when we're training people on the on the accounts, we actually spend more time on the setup, exactly as I've done there with you now, than we do on the transactions. Because if we get the setup right, then we can do the transactions well. I'll just go through these extra buttons. They're more or less just to discount them. Custom groups. Um, is a way of um, linking, um, say, companies together. So let's say you have three companies that sell you feed. You can create a custom group called um, Sellers of Feed, and you can link them together in that way. So if you want to do a report at the end of the year and so I want to see all transactions with the Sellers of Feed, then all the transactions from those three companies will come up together. Um, the Chagas Profit Monitor, um, we have all of the Chagas incomes and expenses within the system. I'll show you in one of the later videos how to use the Chagas Profit Monitor. If you do your accounts well, the quality of your data going into the Profit Monitor system should be top quality. Uh, if you're into VAT, if you're VAT registered, then spend a little bit of time just checking the VAT rates. You know, go in there when you're starting off, delete VAT rates that are not relevant anymore, make sure that the VAT rates that you want to work with are there. Uh, commodities and units we won't go into, um, but they relate to things like, say, milk. Milk uh, is a commodity and milk can be in units of kilos or it can be in units of gallons or liters. So they're all kind of set up. You don't have to do anything yourself. So what we've done in this video is the complete setup. If you do this well and you understand why you've done it, it makes a huge difference when you're getting started with transactions. So we're going to leave this video now and then the next video we're going to get into putting in some transactions.